Hello again, small number of random people that might, by chance, stumble upon this video, and possibly my friends who, uh, who have pitied me for, uh, for views. Regardless of who you are, welcome back to The Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and uh, let's just jump right back into the action. So last time we saw a bit of a changing of the guard here in Western Anatolia and uh, the Eastern Balkans. Jermion and a few of his uh, Balic friends pounced on Kandar and were able to take not only Ankara, Bolu, and Optimatoi, but Constantinople itself. They were also able to take down the city of Burgas, which was formerly a Venetian vassal, but no more. Venice's territory in the Balkans has been slowly chipped away by its neighbors. That's what happens when you release a ton of vassals and then failed to keep a hold of them, possibly because of League War shenanigans. Regardless, up here we have Prussia fighting against a lot of people. Not quite a coalition war, but uh, he did attack somebody with a lot of friends to call in, including Bohemia. So uh, we might see them taking some losses in this one. Space Marines can only get you out of so much. We also have Gascony at war with the city of Cremona that occupied by Milan. Uh, Milan's been trying to take that back ever since, uh, oh my. Well, there's Emperorship changing from the boost to Imperial Authority. I'm guessing Austria kept it. They have. That was a pretty early succession. Uh, yeah, we now have Beatrice de Savoia with a regency for the 555 Joseph von Habsburg. He will hopefully be a great ruler for the Habsburg dynasty. Regardless, uh, we'll see if Milan can get this back. I mean, regardless of whether they do or not, they're completely surrounded by Siena. Protected by the likes of Serbia, Gascony, Würzburg, Sicily, which would make things difficult for Siena. Until they were able to call in Austria, that is. So, you know, Milan's days and Cremona's days might be numbered. They might not be. We'll see. Sardinia has been able to retain its couple of provinces on main continental Europe. Though, again, they will have to do quite a bit more if they want to form Sardinia-Piedmont. You know, not the least, uh, the province of Piedmont itself. Currently owned by the reformed Switzerland. Looks like Spain has become angry with Morocco. Uh, after that rather embarrassing loss in the League War, uh, Spain, the number one great power, just let a rather small Austrian stack waltz into the peninsula and siege down a bunch of its stuff. That's why Catalonia owns Valencia. Uh, but now deciding it's angry and uh, he wants to continue the Reconquista just 150 or so years late. Looks like Morocco's not putting up that stern of defense. Uh, the Mamluks might be over there to help, though. Are they involved? They're not. So did Morocco initiate this war then? Uh, that would be the Spanish Crusade against Kong that Morocco is defending against. Maybe not the best of allies for them to pick, but they are able to occupy a lot of Spanish Guinea. So uh, that, I guess, counterbalances the war score from having a lot of their heartlands. Oh, who am I kidding? <laughs> Morocco's losing pretty badly up north. As soon as Spain can go south, Spain or uh, Morocco will hurt more, to say nothing of Kong. Morocco can uh, field a pretty decent-sized army, though. We see 32k with a 432 over there. That's the uh, the ruler, the Marinid Sultan. And we do have 26k down here, led by a 341, uh, walking through Songhai. So, you know, that's about, well, uh, 32 and 26, 58 versus Spain's, it uh, looks somewhere close to 90,000. So, not bad. Looks like Jermion's throwing its weight around again in the region, trying to just usurp what Saruhan had before and pick at the carcass of Venice. Venice has even lost its home. Venezia has been taken by Austria at some point in the past, and uh, th that's just going to be lost to a bunch of hungry, hungry Beliks. And there's another round of Bulgarian separatists. They are, you know, aside from old Glenn Drummond, I've remembered him, the great Scottish fellow who prolonged their uh, the inevitable for a few years. But really, other than that, Bulgarian separatists are the heroes of that. They just keep or of of this uh, playthrough. They just keep trying, and they keep trying in a great area. None of the states have ever been strong enough to stand against them. The, the one who had the best chance was actually Byzantium, back in the day when they had uh, 
17k against the Bulgarian Separatist 21. Everyone else has just lost. So Byzantium survives because Maria couldn't siege them down. Perhaps they'll be able to pick up some alliances and... I don't know, just sit there in Maria? <laughs> oh, well. East Rome is alive again. We also see Shervan released. I think that means that Kiva, Kiva won that war against Persia. Well done. We see that Delhi got quite a bit of territory from that. Keita, Kalat, Siwi, I, I think... Actually, no. Delhi had these before, but they did get Kalat and Keita, and uh, that labels the Suleiman range as theirs. Well done by Delhi, and well done by Kiva. I'm surprised Kiva didn't take anything for themselves, but I guess they just wanted to release Shervan instead. So that uh, gives Persia an awkward little uh, exclave over in Dagestan. But I'm sure Shervan will be taken by them in the future, assuming Kiva doesn't go over there and snipe it out and create even more border gore. Do you see Shamar at war with Hejaz? Hejaz really... Uh, perhaps they'll be able to form Arabia. Who knows? They'd have to be able to turn on Ethiopia to do that, I think. Uh, Arabia, a nation I've come nowhere close to forming, but uh, yeah, who knows? Bahmanis has a bit of a blight in the middle of their country. We see Shanda somehow managing to get sped out right in the middle of Bahmanis, like uh, almost ge uh, geographically in the center. Uh, righty then. And Bahmanis still not with the institutions to uh, to become a great power again. I think they'll get them eventually. Let's see how uh, colonialism has spread into this. I mean, everything present in uh, Ahmadabad, everything present in Surat, but colonialism still trying to make its way through uh, western India into the vast majority of Bahmanis. They'll get there, eventually. In Indonesia, still don't see any Spanish colonies uh, springing up. Also, don't see Ternate and Tador fighting, I don't think. Ternate also colonizing Sula. It means they have likely finished Manila. And uh, I guess the two rivals will have a colonial race of sorts. <laughs> Revi or, uh, revived Emperor Yan taking the herd again. A lot of it sieged by Korea, some of it sieged by Jin. <laughs> but there's their 39 stack ready to uh, reverse that tide. So they must be at war with... Oh, they, uh, they managed a coalition. Korea, Ming, Xi, and Jin all va very angry with the Emperor and Mandate Holder. Uh... Though it looks like Jan has called in some people to help out with that. Perhaps? Is anybody, is anybody helping them? Let's check Ming. They were in that coalition. Nope, just Emperor Jan. Uh, though the Ming are definitely uh, hurting from that. Though it looks like she has helped them out, sieging back Xi'an for them. And uh, I, I just see, I just saw the connection there. Xi'an, Xi wonder if that's the basis for that state. Does she have a core on that? Oh my! Yan has accepted peace, giving quite a few provinces back to Jin and reuniting Korea's lands. So, uh, his emperorship in the east not looking all that great. Buryatia, the main horde up here, they're uh, fighting for Jin and for now looking to be losing also have to deal with some Manchurian separatists. So I guess we might see Manchu by virtue of their separatists being a thing. And the uh, Kamchatkan guys, uh, they're a thing. Japan has colonized the Kurils though, so good for them. Doesn't mean Japan has taken exploration, though uh, you might think they might go for like Guam? But the Kuril is the only thing they've colonized so far. Are they present in North America? Don't see anything up in Alaska. Though we do see Spain starting to work on California. The natives, though, have been mostly left to their own devices. We do have the 13 colonies taking root down here in Florida. Actually, 
rather swapping places with a Florid, though that uh, spawned from Toulouse. Toulouse, the one to colonize a lot of eastern North America. And we do have Vinland spawning finally up here in, uh, well, Vinland, <laughs> in uh, the Quebec area. So yeah, it seems like the natives have been mostly let alone. We see Powhatan, uh, they're at war with Abenaki, but a li little bit of native coexistence in this one. I uh, do see some of Great Britain's armies moving around there. Uh, are they fighting any natives? They have a truce with Huron, Carib, and Powhatan, so uh, we saw all of those tags still alive. Um, not sure what to think. Wow. Uh, so I'm guessing that Spain pieced Morocco out of this war against Kong, but now I have to deal with Kong having all of Spanish Guinea sieged up, and uh, 35,000 Beninese separatists down there. Spain might lose this war by virtue of not being willing to send its troops down there navally. Um, Spain, despite being the number two great power, really kind of a laughing stock right now. You'd think, at the very least, despite the AE, they might have maybe wanted to establish a foothold in Northern Africa, but uh, choosing not even to do that. Just piecing Morocco out for... Maybe just money? Didn't terminate any alliances, that's for sure. The Bulgarian Separatists continue to rage. Uh, Germion did take Philibé. From... From who? Uh, I think that might have been one of the ones that Kandar still held on to. Maybe it flipped to Bulgaria and then to Germion? I don't know. Maybe I can look at province history here. Or is that just a CK2 thing? I'm I'm not all that familiar with, uh, with these sorts of things. So I apologize for that. I guess I could tag into Germion and, and look at that, but I, I don't want to. I'll be frank. Looks like Russia has annexed Circassia, and now looking to complete its conquest of the Northern Caucasus by taking Dagestan. Emeritia, sorry, Emeritia and Odiev have rather similar colors, but Odiev has held on to its little exclave over here forever. Still guaranteed by Persia, which definitely uh, gives them some weight against Russia. Well done by Kiva and Delhi. I was hoping that they'd be able to stand up against them. And it's not even Russia's turn. I thought the presence of Russian armies in that area might... Uh, not, but no, Kiva has just given access to Russia, hoping that they go uh, continue to wreck Persia. And I think they will. Kiva is, however, two military techs behind Russia, and one behind Persia, so... wonder how they won that war if they were that far behind in tech. Still, congratulations to them. If I thought that my computer could handle it, and it probably could, I, I would consider going speed 5 now. Things have been pretty quiet, aside from in the Balkans. Uh, and Sicily eating most of Naples. My goodness, how the tables have turned there. Sicily, formerly confined to Malta and only Malta, has ripped through, taken Sicily itself, or was given Sicily uh, back, I think, during the League War, and has now turned and just taken all of Naples, save Abruzzi, Bari, and Salento. And of those, I mean, they took Napoli itself, an excellent province. Not to mention a coastal center of trade. I, I think Naples might be one of the highest developed provinces at the start of the game. I mean, I think Paris is 34, London is in the 20s, uh, Beijing is 31, Valencia is... I think in, like, the maybe 18 or something. It's not quite as high. Constantinople is 23. I think Naples starts above 30 development. Uh, Rome, I think, does start with 33. Uh, well, I think I can see how many times this has been developed, yes? It's been improved three times. Uh, th th that's how I can tell. So, yeah, Rome starts with 30. Naples starts with... Wow. Uh, Naples starts with 32. So, yeah, a great province at the start. And I'll check Valencia, too. For my curiosity. Yeah, Valencia starts with 15. So, uh, 
I mean, it becomes a great province in most campaigns as Aragon's capital or as a important coastal center of trade for Spain, but uh, doesn't start with as much as one might think. Russia winning this war against Persia handily, that tech difference has got to help. As uh, does the fact that Kiva is probably rooting for him. Maybe some gifts have been sent there to uh, help out Russia's treasury. Who knows? And... Oh, poor Wu. They have pretender rebels everywhere. They have 35... 66... Sorry, 56... 76... 76 and 11... 80,000 pretender rebels. Rather, 87,000 Pretender Rebels, and not counting that stack that just lost. I mean, they're all separated, but that 35 stack will make life difficult for Wu's rather lesser army. Also, Emperor Yan dealing with a 45k stack of, of noble rebels of their own. Not to mention... wow. They're, they're losing hard to peasants. I think that might have been a surprise uprising, uh, where Yan didn't have their maintenance up at full, but regardless, they just lost the peasants. <laughs> and choosing to retreat to Nanjing, where another larger group of peasants are waiting. <laughs> oh, poor Emperor Yan. He should never take the mandate. The mandate has not been good for him. The mandate has not been good for anybody because there isn't a super-powered Ming around to uh, just get mandate forever. Looks like Marwar has gained some provinces from Delhi? Huh. And Nagar is still around, still has more provinces than they do at the start of the game, so cheers to them. Mal is still out, John Purr is uh, alive. Bahmanis is dealing with particularists, or sorry, noble rebels. Sorry, uh, both. Man, I should learn to pay attention, shouldn't I? Though, uh, the old blood sugar is kind of low right now. I'll use that as an excuse. And there's the Neapolitan Separatists ready to uh, punish Sicily for taking so much of that land. They took out one of the stacks, but that 18 stack is going to be a little bit tougher to deal with, especially as they're going to be able to siege down Naples rather quickly. We'll see if Sicily can do it, but uh, rebels have done well for themselves, really. Ultinia, the only province in Europe that is still under Kandar, looks like Germion took both Silistria and Castamonu. Poor Kandar. <laughs> That's all I can say, really. And I'm really surprised that Aretna is, uh... That they've been very stubborn. I mean, they got most of their ter territory taken at the start of the game by Karaman, stayed around in, I think, just Amasya for about 60 years, finally had that taken, I think, by Karaman, were later spit out and have just survived by being allied to the right people, in this case, Karaman Jermion. Uh, I think if Persia comes knocking, or Russia, then things might get dicey for them. I'm sure that Russia would love to uh, take the second Rome for themselves. Of course, they already have the third, and have had that since the start of the game. Moscow at 42 development. That's been developed how many times? 25, so uh, that means Moscow starts with, what, 17? 18? I think Moscow and Novgorod start with about the same amount, though I'm sure Novgorod is, uh... Yep, not quite as good as Moscow, but still a great province to have. Livonia has annexed Riga. Has also lost Ocel and Latgalia to the Livonian Order, though. So, uh, a bit of trading going on in this region. The Livonian Order, uh, with an advantage because of cores and because they've been around longer and have the alliance with Brabant. But Livonia has managed to ally with Mazovia Poland. Wow, how do they hold on to an alliance with both of those? Poland is rivaled Mazovia, yes? No, but Mazovia's rivaled them. Um, huh. So Prussia has gotten out of that war and doesn't appear to have lost all that much. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think they took Sheb, Ayrs, and Oberlausitz from Bohemia. Space Marines can do quite a lot for you. I'm gonna have to play a pressure game at some point, though, uh, not now. Got a few plans for campaigns in the future, including an Ideas Guy run. I'm hoping that Aruma finishes his before I do that. More out of respect than anything. I mean, not like it matters. I have, uh, 
a total of like 27 or 30 views at this point, and he is the, I think, the biggest U4 YouTuber out there, but, you know, I like the guy. He's a, I learned a lot of what I know about a U4 from watching his videos, so. Might as well uh, do that, though mine does, uh, my plan is a little different than, uh, than what he did, starting in, uh, he started in Ocel, and has made the Kingdom of Might a truly mighty force indeed, I'll be starting somewhere else. But not in the New World. I can't remember if I've <laughs> said what my plans are for that in the past or not, but uh, it's a thing that will be coming. Also plan on doing a Horde extravaganza where I start as the Great Horde, try to get Gold Rush, uh, forming the Golden Horde before 1500, and then move on to get, uh, I'll graze my horse here and here, holding 200 grain provinces. Uh, also getting the one where you embrace all the institutions as somebody who starts as a horde, and uh, I think there might be uh, a great con would be fun to get as well. Uh, that's hold, what, all of the Russia, Central Asia, and maybe another region. I think Persia as well, as, uh, as the Golden Horde. So that'll be fun. Serbia! Serbia's drawn the ire of the Space Marines. That's not good for them. How did that happen? That would be the Prussian conquest of Anhalt. They allied Anhalt, presumably, and that was not a good choice for them. Meanwhile, Venice, finding itself in a similar place to uh, where Byzantium was at one point. They're restricted to only Thessaly, Dalmatia, and Lika, the latest of the vestigial great powers. V uh, Byzantium was never one itself, but, uh, I mean, they had quite a bit at one point. They had pretty much all of the... They had all of Greece, I think, save the Peloponnese and Athens. And then also had big uh, Optimatoi, Balu. I think they might have had Castamonu at one point. And they died, and now they're alive in just Maria, with no allies. But hey, people need uh, 9k to siege them down, so that's on their side. <laughs> And I'm not seeing Neapolitan Separatists anymore. Looks like Sicily might have taken care of them. Well done. Or someone else helped him out with that. Sicily, a staunch Catholic. Pretty good for them, them being right next to the Pope. And uh, the Pope is guaranteed by Siena. I mean, that's one way to curry favor with them, I suppose. We do see Sardinia's European holdings occupied by Gascony. What's that in aid of? That would probably be Gascony trying to finally eat Provence. That is the case. Though we see that Gascony is warned by Spain. I... To be frank, I abhor warnings. I hate the concept of warnings. Like, it, it makes sense at the beginning of the game where the Ottomans don't want all of these little states rising up and eating each other to become a force that can oppose them. I don't like it when I'm playing in that area, but I understand it. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Maybe it... I don't know. I, I, just, I just don't like it when warnings are used in this manner. But that's just me, and uh, really I, I should leave the ranting to... Oh my. I should leave the ranting to others who are better at it. <laughs> Oman, though, has turned the tables on Hejaz, and has taken back pretty much all of its cores. So that's well done by them. Though they now have to deal with Persia, so uh, one can argue how lucky or skilled they truly are. Persia choosing to attack, uh, still at war with Russia and Sweden, but... Huh. Actually now only the defender against the Mamluks and the Mamlukian purge of Persian heresy. So that's where Oman is involved but the war with Russia is over with no obvious territorial changes. Was Persia made to break alliances? I don't see them... I don't know if they had any alliances before, even. So, they're still guaranteeing Odiev. There's that. Odiev, who managed to take Oltenia. So, uh, Odiev now has all of Wallachia. Uh, at least Valachia at the start, and Kandar now stuck only in Sinope. That's... that's sad. That's very sad. They've done well for themselves, but uh, no more. Oh, yay. 
Yan. Emperor Yan. Why do you keep taking the mandate? <laughs> I mean, this is only the second time they've had it, but, uh... And also, former Emperor Wu getting the screws put to him as well. Looks like by Liang, of all tags. Though they are getting countersieged for their troubles. Oh, things are just... Things have been a mess in the East, and Bahmanis is almost full sieged by Madurai. Wow. Um. Well, seeing the uh, coalition sign there on Bahmanis, I think they might have drawn the ire. Yes, they drew the ire of Bengal, Jampur, Malwa, and Nagaur, who probably decided to attack them, maybe? Yep, I'm guessing the Coalition fired their war, and then Madurai is just here to, uh, to clean up. Uh, so I'm going to actually end this episode a little bit early. I usually try to make these 30 minutes, but my blood sugar is just awful right now. So thank you all for joining me. This has been The Great Partition. I've been Paragon Saber. I will see you next time.